What's good guys, Fantasy Joe back here with some more fantasy football content today. I am back with an early round decision series. Today I'm talking about Trey McBride versus Mark Andrews. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you like these videos, there's a ton of other ones on the channel. Devontae Adams versus Marvin Harrison Jr. Travis Etienne versus Kyron Williams Saquon versus Jonathan Taylor. More to come as well. So stick around, hit that subscribe button if you like these. But without further ado, let's start talking about Trey McBride versus Mark Andrews. So you see McBride had a kind of a breakout campaign for him this last year, really stepped up and filled a different role. But when you really look at the story of this season, Ertz's injury really gave him a chance to shine early on. So once Ertz went out around week four or five, he started to be utilized a lot more. His last 10 games of the season when he was in that, you know, the, the tight end one role, he was on pace for 148 targets from week 6 on, but his week, his pace for the last 10 games from weeks 8 to 18, he was on pace for 144 targets, 112 receptions, 1,114 receiving yards from week 8 on was his pace. And like I said, the targets were his on pace for 148 from week 6 on. Basically, there's a change in the guard. Trey McBride was an early drafted tight end. He was a really good player in college. Now he's been given the opportunity in the NFL, and he has shined last year with Kyler Murray. Now his situation has changed a little bit. Marvin Harrison Jr. is coming to town, the number four overall draft selection, the most hyped wide receiver in some time. I do think that they Marvin Harrison's probably going to get the lead in targets on this offense. I don't think Trey McBride will be that far behind him, though, and I do think it will be a competition. Let's say, so I have Marvin Harrison Jr. projected for 145 targets right now, and I have Trey McBride projected for 135. I think that's more than enough for each of them to succeed for fantasy football. If you get 100 targets at the tight end position, you're doing quite well. 135 puts you in rare, elite air, and that's why he's being talked about with the likes of Mark Andrews, a guy who's finished at consistently the top of the position for years. Now, one thing I'll throw out here, and this is another big one, especially at the tight end position. Look at this uh, strength of schedule, tight end. First, easiest schedule in the league for tight ends. That makes a massive difference to me. Things like that change over the regular season once the season starts to roll, but he should have one of the more favorable tight end schedules regardless of whether it's first or you know fourth, but either way, he has a strong schedule to open for the regular season. Now, I have him projected this season to take even a bigger step up from where he was last year, not continue on that torrid pace, but to be very good. I have him projected for 94 receptions, 1,050 receiving yards, and 7 touchdowns. That's where I've been making the biggest leap in that touchdown category, mainly because I think that his breakout now is going to be you know one of the guys that's utilized heavily in the red zone. He's got size as well at 6'4", so is Marvin Harrison Jr., but with Marvin Harrison Jr. coming to the team, the thing where I think it benefits him is I think the team will have more touchdown opportunities. We had Kyler Murray come back over the second half of the year as well. I think just a healthy Kyler, a year moved on an ACL injury with a healthy tandem of pass catchers and McBride, Harrison, James Conner's a good running back. They've got some guys on this team. They've got some young offensive linemen that hopefully can take a little bit of a step up. But I think this offense can be dramatically better than last year, have a lot more touchdown opportunity. And that's why I have Trey McBride taking that leap in the touchdown category. Moving over to Mark Andrews. So Mark Andrews this last year only sued up for 10 games. But he was still fourth in points for a game with a tight end position. 11.5 was the top of the position. He was still at 11.1, 11.2. So right in there, not very far off the lead. Missed the most games of his career. That's something I wanted to point out. I feel like Mark Andrews gets a very injury-prone label, and he really suits up quite a bit. Not always himself when he suits up, but still. Uh, he was on pace for 104 targets last year. That's one thing I do kind of want to point out. We saw McBride finish with 106 last year. He was on pace for even a lot more when we talked about the utilization and how it changed. <clears throat> I don't think that Mark Andrews has quite the target upside that some of these other guys have two years ago or what we see the 153 153 target season i really don't see that coming back uh i do think they're gonna be more pass heavy but i think you know 120 targets is probably the most we're going to see for mark andrews this season now here's the biggest difference he's the number one red zone factor on this team make no doubt about it in the passing game lamar jackson is looking for mark andrews and he's going to find him 
Now, I will say, though, Zay Flowers is definitely a target threat. Not in the red zone the same way that Andrews is, but he will compete for the team leading targets, I believe, this year. I think he'll get it or be very close. Like I said, I think it'll be neck and neck, which I don't think is all that dissimilar from Marvin Harrison Jr. and Trey McBride's situation, except the names are changed and Zay Flowers is as flashy as a player in people's minds as Marvin Harrison Jr. And Marvin Harrison Jr. is definitely a bigger target hog than Zay Flowers. I'm not saying that he's not. But the ratios are far more similar than you would think. But I have Mark Andrews this year projected for 80 receptions, 920 receiving yards, and 8 receiving touchdowns. Now, I will say the thing with Andrews, that 8 number could easily be 10. But I don't see him having, you know, well over 1,000 receiving yards this year, well over 10 receiving touchdowns. I don't see him breaking any of these numbers this fantasy season. And I do think he's a good draft pick where he's going. I've got Mark Andrews in round 5 before. But currently, you can get Trey McBride in round five, and that is the player I would be taking. I want to take a chance on the young tight end headed into year three, finish the season on a tear, is getting a ton of targets, and is just looking like a fantastic player. Like I said, that pace of 1,114 yards was absolutely fantastic. I think he can do all that again. I think there will be more touchdown opportunity. And Kyler has learned to trust this guy. I think that's a major factor. But I would take Trey McBride over Mark Andrews, and you can give him a draft day discount today. So it's a great move to make. If you guys have made it to this point in the video, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comment section down below. I'll respond as always. This has been Fancy Joe. Thank you guys so much for watching.